This is the story of ten soldiers with one ambition, to fly helicopters for the army. Everyone on course 354 has made it through the first three months of the training and taken their first flights in a helicopter. Everybody's probably had those dreams that where they're swimming through the air or something like that. That's the closest you can come to explaining it, I think. Now the hard work will begin and the pressure will start to count. Right, what did you do there? Too fast. Trainees on course 354 are up against the clock. They're expected to go solo within just 11 flying hours. Right, now you have control of the pedals. Okay, sir. lever. Okay, sir. All right, just keep the taxi. There. Good. To begin with, they're taught the basics. Taking off, hovering and landing. They have to learn quickly. The schedule is tight, and if they fall behind at any stage, it may be impossible to catch up. That's lovely. Okay, I have control. Let's get away from there. Sail clear to the left. At 32, Staff Sergeant Mark Finch is the oldest member of the course and the most experienced. Now, what we'll do now, we'll try landing with all three. He spent half his life in the Royal Signals. But after 16 years, he's disillusioned and wants a fresh challenge. If I pass out and I become an army pilot, then um, I'll hopefully stay, well, I will stay in definitely and uh, do my 22 years and if possible, I'll stay on longer. But um, if I fail, I've got a couple of stark choices to make. Either I get out um, or, I, or I go for a totally different trade or job within the army, to what I was doing before. I really, this is, this is what I want to do in the army now. Uh, and basically, if I don't achieve it, then I've got a lot of hard thinking about what I'm going to do. I'd like to stay in the army. Uh, I've always enjoyed the army. But I don't want to go back to what I was doing. Mark Finch is struggling to hover. It's a test of coordination. Hands and feet have to keep moving together, always making intricate adjustments. Got to try and relax a bit more. Just look well ahead and maintain the hover attitude. Don't get annoyed. Just ease it away, nice and gentle. You have the technology, you've proved that. It's just a matter of regaining control. If you stay nice and relaxed, try not to think about it, then it all kind of, it just happens. And you're just able to stay there, relatively in a small area. But uh, because you start concentrating on trying to stay still, you start to tense up and it all goes to pieces. You start flying around all over the place, you start over controlling, you're know, making bigger movements than you need to. Uh, and then you just start seesawing all over the sky. Right, guys, I don't know how we're going to do this. No way. Badly. But we, what we just thought is we'll just go through the questions. If anybody has a problem with one, then we'll, yeah, I don't know any. we'll try and sort it out. <laughs> yeah, I know you found it. Because of his rank and experience, Mark assumes control whenever the course are together, even during informal revision evenings. How do you check the serviceability of the turn and slip indicator? Why? Precession, that's one. Since starting on helicopters, the technical workload has increased. The trainees have to sit regular exams on aerodynamics, safety and design. The next exam is never far away. We have noticed a definite step up in, in, the, in the tempo. 
and uh, we are expected to learn things a lot quicker now. And I know that things are going to progress uh, even faster as we move on, like a snowball effect. Anybody know what the second rate is? 360. Yeah, and the next one is 540. Before the trainees can go solo, they have to prove to their instructors they can fly a circuit of the airfield at exactly the right height and the right speed. Okay, you have the control. I have the control, sir. You have the controls. Just ease the nose forward to give us up 90 knots. Ease it forward, 90 knots. They practice circuit after circuit until it becomes second nature. Ease it forward, nose forward. We're consistently holding 80 knots. We need to be at 90 knots. That's good. As well as basic circuit work, the trainees are taught to deal with emergencies. They have to assume the helicopter could lose power at any time. OK, practice engine failure again. 142 front stop. Lieutenant Jenny Firth is being tested on her safety drill. OK, mayday, mayday, mayday. 142, 142. Engine failure, crosswind leg. Um, cut off. Oh, we did again that so fast. Okay, I have control. The reason we're getting it so fast because you, you lure the nose and started diving at the ground. Yeah. Okay. Nice entry though, nice turn, no problem with that. Just watch that speed on the descent. Yeah. Uh, this time when we go down, you get to the right point, you start the flare, and you started it at the right point last time. Yeah. I want you to say it out loud, okay? We're flaring now. Flare, flare, flare. Check, level, run on. Okay? Yeah. Mark Finch's hovering has improved, but he's now having trouble with the emergencies. Right, follow through the controls. In this exercise, the instructor cuts off the power and leaves him to land using only the pitch of the rotor blades to defy gravity. It's one of the most important and difficult tests for any new pilot. Mark has only three flying hours left to improve his safety drill and make it solo. Time is running out. I know that I can fly. It's these emergency drills. I must learn the drills, and, and I, I don't know them very well. And that's because I know that it causes a confidence problem. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Army Air 146, 146, 146. Engine off. Attempting landing. Middle wallop. Bearing distance, fuel shut off lever. Once I've learned all these checks uh, so that I can spiel them off speedily, then I think everything else will fall back into place again. Establish auto rotation back to 60 knots, harness tight, and battery off. Course 354 are at the brink. They've reached the 11th hour and they should all be going solo. Very nice, very nice. No problem with your takeoffs and landings today, uh, is there? Nothing. So because they're so smooth and nice. Two zero one front stop, downwind. Uh, I'm going to jump out now and let you go off on your own. Oh no! <laughs> right, sir. Your circuit's uh, ragged, but um, that will come hopefully with practice. Happy? Happy, yes. I've got a look of fear on my face. <laughs> nice, nice, gentle takeoff as you've been doing. Yeah. Don't get tense. Um, just appreciate that it will be a slightly different hover attitude than you used.
These are anxious moments for Jimmy, alone in charge of a million pound helicopter for the first time. keep wanting to go solo and having to do yet another sortie and yet another sortie and then finally you do do it and then when the instructor tells you he's getting out you do get a few butterflies in the stomach but uh, it lets you know that your instructor has faith in the fact that you can take yourself around a circuit and get back on the ground safely I wasn't quite sure I had that faith in myself back on the ground there's been an emergency one of the trainees, Lieutenant J.P. Miller, has had to abort his flight. We're just coming in for hover practice and my instructor said the immortal words of one more good takeoff and landing and you go first solo and the aircraft bursts into flames. <laughs> Not quite that, we just, uh, we're just hovering over there. Uh, and we saw a whole lot of fumes in the uh, front of the cockpit. So we just landed on heat to control, landed on and we just shut down together. I turn off whatever switch I need to. What's happened, do you think? Uh, the batteries just heat, overheated. Uh, just the hot weather, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I just asked my instructor, he said it happens occasionally. Uh, act of God or something, <laughs> suddenly the helicopter. Uh, <laughs> got fumes everywhere. Oh well. First solo is uh, is quite a hurdle, but it's a big um, boost to your confidence. And once you've done that, and you know that you're, you're capable of flying a circuit and landing it safely, then it's going to boost your confidence for the other exercises that you're going to have to do afterwards. Is that you, David? Yes. Could you go along to the um, stewards' crew, please, and ask staff Finch to come up and see me? Everyone on the course has gone solo within the allotted time. Everyone except Staff Sergeant Mark Finch. His flying still isn't considered safe enough. You're Instructor has been to see me and we've had a discussion, the result of which I now have to tell you, you are on review. So first of all, do you understand the situation yes, that exists? Yes, yes. You're on review. The reasons that you fail to meet certain standards, as far as I can gather from the instructor's written reports, you know we write these 50, 60 yes. books, is first of all your division, in, division of attention is poor and your awareness is poor. Now that's big major things, is big block words. But what you have to do is find out specifically what you're doing wrong and ask your instructor how to cure these things. Being on review, Mark will now be isolated from the rest of the course and given four extra flying hours to sort out his problems. He must go solo in this time, otherwise he'll be thrown off the course. Mark's safety drill has improved, but now he's become so nervous he's having trouble with the basics again, his hovering and landing. Back on the controls. Cure control. Oh, control, sir. 
telling us, you know, you, you've got to try not to let it bother you because the more it bothers you, the worse it becomes. But it's, it's very difficult not to, to let it bother you. Very difficult to put that kind of thing to the back of your mind because you know that it's, you know, it, it could be a, a potentially big, it could be a very big problem that uh, may, may get me kicked off the course if I don't get it sorted out. Uh, and that thought preys on my mind. Um, that, f that fear of getting um, kicked off the course um, really does start to, to bite. After three review flights, Mark still hasn't gone solo. Now he has only one flight left to prove himself. You don't want to see anybody on the course struggling. We want to all, all get through and all help each other get through. We'd like to, to have a wings parade with ten people on it. So naturally you do get a bit um, guilty almost that you've been able to go on and break the, the solo barrier. But you have to realise that uh, anybody's liable to go on review for whatever reason. It's bound to be a bit of a shock when it happens. But it's a system that's been established to try and help you um, get over whatever problem it is you're having at the time with your flying and get back on course. And I'm sure Star Finch will be uh, going solo on Monday. I hope so. on. Press the reset. If it doesn't work, turn it off. Land. It's make or break day for Mark Finch, the day of his fourth and final review flight. He's hardly slept due to nerves. He simply must go solo today. Then press reset. The more you think about it, the more you have to sit and stew about it, the worse it seems. I just want to get out there and, and prove that I can do it. Mark's last flight is with one of the top military examiners. He'll make the final decision whether Mark is good enough to go solo. Mark's career is on the line. This is his last chance to prove he has a future as an army pilot. All I want you to do is fly your surfaces as normal, and then I'd like to see some landings. Yeah. 
keep the speed on. Halfway through the flight, Mark has reason to be confident. He's managed to put aside his nerves and fly two good circuits. Fifty minutes in and the flight reaches its climax. Mark's circuits have gone well, but before he can go solo, the examiner wants to see a good smooth landing. Mark keeps trying to make that final landing, but the pressure is getting to him. The examiner has taken control and ends the flight. I think I've seen enough. I'll get back from here. Mark can't help but fear the worst. Right. Talk there. So tense, I knew I was tense, and I felt it start to wobble a bit, and I thought, no, sorry, I'll pull back up out of this. Yeah. When I came up for, I think it was the second or third time, I thought, yeah. you know, this is really getting a bit mad. He gave me plenty of time to, to have a good crack at it, but in the end, he just said, you know, he worked hard enough. Not yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's just annoying because I was so close. If I knew I'd been able to land it then, yeah. I felt sure he would have got out and let me go. Mm -hmm. and do a solo, so... It's not over, I mean... No. no they can still make a decision upstairs to give you, a, give you another hour or so. Fine. Yeah. So well, he said that's all there is. I mean, but now, of course, they're going to look over the whole course. I mean, yeah. They want to take into account the whole thing. Hello, star. Would you like to take a seat? Take your hat off and relax. Now, we've got to the crunch time. We've reached a point, really, where we can't progress any further. And um, it's really, I think, the, the limit of your ability that we're facing. You have addressed a particular problem, and you've eventually been able to overcome it to a, to a reasonable degree. But then, in so doing, you've deteriorated in some other area. And consequently, we're into now what I would call a vicious circle. We get you out of one problem by working at it, and you've then allowed other things to suffer along the way. Even if we were to allow you enough time to go solo, and we've really given you quite a bit more time now, um, we could get you solo eventually, um, maybe in another couple of hours, maybe five hours. But you've then got the next hurdle to overcome and so on. And the pressure that you'd be facing would be just so great, you just, it would damage you. So. Um, as a result of that, and having looked through your reports at this stage, I'm really left with little option but to recommend to the Commandant that you be suspended from flying training. You've got two good for a big boat. So, gentlemen, um, Mark has uh, been suspended and um, he's going to uh, have some leave until Monday, then we'll sort out all the paperwork. If we can give him uh, a bit of support now when he needs it, and we'll sort him out next week. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Cheers. Cheers. I could have made it if, I, if they had the time. They didn't have the time, so that was that. It's all over. Um, they said they'd try and get me a good posting somewhere, you know, whatever they can. And that'll be it, really. A few weeks, well, I don't know, maybe a week or so to leave. And then uh, back to the good old Royal Six.
fine call. Can I do the call? The call. <laughs> it only gets more difficult from now on in. Um, this, this is relatively simple. They don't see it as simple. They see it at that stage as, as being a huge hurdle. But this is the lowest of all the hurdles they're going to jump over. And the moment they're over this hurdle, the next hurdle is there, but it's actually higher, and so on, all the way to the end of the course. Um, with his profile and his inherent um, um, problem with division of attention, his awareness, indeed his anticipation, he had trouble identifying that something was going wrong and he had to do something about it. Um, he would never have passed the course. Yeah. Cheers, Peter. <coughs> Thanks very much. Cheers, Richie. Cheers, Richie. Oh, God, this is going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> You Thanks very much. Champion, did you? <coughs> Not at all. Oh, good. This is a fire. Permission for bottom lip to wobble to. <laughs> I feel that I could have could have got through, and you know, maybe I would have scraped through, but I think I could have done it. And had I just managed to get that so, then everything would have come so much easier. Uh, and I could have dealt with whatever else they had to give me. I enjoy flying, just, just for flying's sake. And unfortunately, that's all I can take away with me now, is the, the experience of having flown. Just being up there, being free, um, doing what you want to do, uh, just being able to control the, the thing. It's been terrific. Mark Finch will be sent back to the Royal Signals and then posted to Northern Ireland. He's been told not to reapply for the pilot's course. What went wrong then? Well, cut a long story short, in the end, I couldn't land it. Couldn't land it? It's a good life, isn't it? Course 354 have had their first casualty. How many more will suffer the same fate before the end of the year? The nine remaining trainees know that the hardest part of the course still lies ahead.